From Content360, this is the state of client acquisition. Welcome to the state of client acquisition. This is your host, Michael Bohannes. I'm very excited today to be sharing this story uh, with you about, uh, it's quite a personal topic. It's about how in uh, 2014, I went to see a doctor for my anxiety. And I think in retrospect, I made a big choice there because I decided to simply walk away, to decide that no, I was not anxious and that I did not to get professional help for it. And how does this have to, what does this have to do with client acquisition? Well, so much of our work is mindset. It's so important and I keep discovering it every day as I'm getting more and more successful with my business is that the only difference between who I am now and who I was a year ago is that I have a much stronger mindset now and that I'm way more self-aware and not prone to distractions and, and any other kind of breakdowns that keep me from doing the work. So I wanted to cover this today because I think there is so much work to be done. I also see this with many of my clients where the biggest thing holding them back is mindset challenges. So I wanted to discuss that today and give you a recipe, I think you will find it at least interesting, find it worth thinking about, a recipe how to get rid of a debilitating sense of anxiety that may be holding you back unnecessarily. And on top of the show, I'm going to cover a brief question from a listener. So I hope you enjoy. And without further ado, let's get straight into this week's episode. As a consultant, coach, or solopreneur, any other of these variants, should you have a website a domain that talks about your product, your business, your service, or should it be just your first name, last name, .com? That is a question uh, recently somebody asked me, and so I thought I'd cover it here on the top of the show before diving into the main topic. I honestly believe that until you're at a seven-digit run rate, seven-figure run rate yearly, then I don't think you need to worry about that at all. My mentor, uh, Mark Firth, has markfirthonline.com and then linkedpreneurs.com. It's just, it's a jumble. It's not a coherent strategy. And he's on one and a half million dollars a year. So uh, none of that matters, to be honest. And that's kind of my main message here. Until you're at that level where you need to seriously think about a comprehensive website strategy, how you're going to be attracting clients through your websites, you're running ads, obviously, and all of that, like you, you, you are really professionalizing your entire offering. Until then, it doesn't really matter what kind of domain name you have. What does matter a lot is that your website looks very professional and that it's high quality photography, whatever you have, no silly stock images, because that does impact your credibility. But whether it is on uh, firstnamelastname.com or winclientshere.com or something like this, it doesn't really matter. Like there's a couple of examples. Most people in my space, at least, have done it this way. Like one of my earlier mentor Sam Ovens, he used to have samovens.com until he scaled to about seven figures. And then he went, he bought actually a good domain name, which is consulting.com. Another guy who I really like and follow, Dan Henry, he used to have danhenry.com and then he went to get clients. And I think it does make sense that once you're at that level, then you actually buy a really expensive domain name, something that is truly impressive, like consulting.com or like getclients.com, because it's obviously clear that these domains will cost you probably a six digit figure, if not more. So it's definitely a signal at that point at who you are. But I think if you were tempted to be, if, if you're, your name is John Smith, if you're tempted to go from johnsmith.com and then the only thing you could effectively afford is something like win clients here for fastbiz.com or some something silly or something with a non.com top level domain i think i would i would not do that it's a signaling tool once you're at that really big uh, level then you can invest into something big Okay, so I hope this was a useful answer. And now let's get to the main topic. I talked about 
this topic on uh, LinkedIn on Sunday and it caused quite a stir, a lot of discussions by now, over 20 comments on this topic with people partially quite uh, aggressively disagreeing with me. So obviously that makes for good content fodder. So let's explore it. And I actually want to not just reiterate what I said, but also to add an additional perspective. What are we talking about here? And that is the topic of how you can let go of anxiety by simply choosing to walk away from it. Now, I know this is not a very biz dev or client acquisition related topic, but honestly it is because everything is connected. 90% of your uh, winning on um, in terms of client acquisition, in terms of growing your business is related to your mindset. And one of the things that can really cripple you significantly is the question of any form of anxiety, uh, fears, any kind of obsessive compulsive thinking, because that of course makes you a much worse entrepreneur. You cannot focus on the task at hand, your mind is wandering, you constantly are doubting yourself, beating yourself up when you are supposed to be prospecting and selling, closing and doing uh, content for your business and serving your clients, right? So any Anything that is does not serve these purposes is time badly spent. And I wanted to quickly share my story on this topic. I was in uh, 2014, I was in a pretty bad place myself because I had just, my first business had failed. I was in a job that I did not really enjoy. I just did it for the money, to be honest. And I was living in a, in a, in a flat share in London with a, a good guy, with a friend of mine, but it just wasn't the life I, I was expecting to have at that point. I was 36, didn't really enjoy my life. And I kind of fell into a bit of a existential crisis there. And I decided that I would go and see a doctor to just see if I had some form of structural anxiety that would be worth um, curing with therapy or medication or anything like that. And so I went to see that doctor and he indeed suggested that I should look at therapy and these are like the, the, the options that I would have and this is how I could uh, get some of the money back for it and so on. And he also hinted at possibly there could be medication that could help me at least treat the symptoms. And so that was an option. And at that point, I, I realized that a lot of negative thinking comes from within. And so trying to solve that question from within is not the right answer. I decided to walk away from the hypothesis of having anxiety. And I decided instead to focus on something external, to have an adventure, to go and really build my career. At that point, my hypothesis was not very good, but at least it was a hypothesis that I was pursuing with a strong level of determination. And I also decided that I wanted to get away from this uh, mindless dating life that London um, offers and instead really look for something stable and uh, find a life partner. And that was a decision that I made very consciously and I decided that I would walk away from my what was supposedly my anxiety at the time. And this is something I would like to encourage you to think about. If you are in a similar position where you are frequently visited by negative thinking, you, you just think that you're less than, and you have beliefs of whatever compulsive nature that you seem that you cannot shake them. Of course, if you if it's to a point where you really don't see uh, in or out and you just feel that you need professional help, of course, you should get professional help. I'm not saying you shouldn't. My point is that simply consider it as an option that you may be able to simply walk away from it. And I walked away from it by simply reorienting myself to something positive, to something that would not get me into this kind of just dealing with myself. You know, the, the happiness is not to be found on the inside. It is something that you find as a byproduct of pursuing a meaningful goal. And I can say this with a lot of certainty and with hindsight, I wish I had recognized this much earlier, that we are not being told very often and it is not part of our dominant cultural narrative that happiness is not indeed found within it is found 
when you are pursuing meaning, which is one of the reasons why I resonate so much with the message that Jordan Peterson tells out. His message is essentially, life is full of suffering, but the suffering can be alleviated if you imbue it with meaning, and meaning can be found where responsibility has been abdicated, or simply where you can find, if you can shoulder a big burden, and you are carrying it with grace and poise and dignity, this is where you will find meaning in your suffering. And I don't mean to diminish any form of suffering that you may be experiencing. I don't mean to belittle anyone's experience, but trust me, because I've done it, that you can choose to walk away from your anxiety without going to therapy, without dealing with it. You know, because this is how humanity used to survive in the past. Therapy is only a very, very recent phenomenon. And of course, many good things have developed. But I think that if therapy were really an unambiguous good, and given how much therapy we're doing in our culture, I think we'd be much happier as a society. And yet we're not. There's a lot of unhappiness in our culture, we see it frequently. There's a certain sense of angst among the young, and uh, there's a lot of medication going around for depression. And I don't know what the numbers are, but like half of the millennials say that they have regular bouts of depression and so on. And of course, it's also exacerbated by COVID. I totally get that. But if our approach to mental challenges were really right, with therapy and medication, then we'd be a lot happier as a society. I would simply posit that if we all learn to think more in the sense of responsibility, of finding meaning in what we do, and trying to alleviate suffering by pursuing really meaningful pursuits, and just stop thinking so much about ourselves and our own little limited inner lives, then we'd be a lot happier as a society. And I'm at least exhibit number one for this. I really could have, and there would have been so much to discuss. I could have been digging into the past of my parents are divorced. I could have dug into that and we emigrated. So I have this experience of getting ripped out of my uh, surroundings as a six year old and uh, coming into a new society. We, I grew up in Czech Republic, Czechoslovakia at the time, and then we emigrated and we couldn't go back to Czechoslovakia. It was communist and we emigrated to capitalist Austria, which is something I'm of course forever grateful to my parents for. And that was something that happened in my youth. I could spend like, years discussing this stuff with a therapist and I didn't and I honestly think it's for the better I don't think I'm significantly less self-aware because of that and I know people who've been going to therapy for decades by now and when I talk to them I just don't feel really that they are so much more self-aware than I am and to fully disclose it I used to be in therapy for something that in retrospect I think would have been much better solved if I had had strong masculine role models in my life when I was growing up and because my parents divorced and I stayed with my mom from the age of 11, then masculine role models were a little bit difficult to come by at the time. So I think if I had had more masculine role models, then I could have uh, avoided going to therapy because essentially what the therapist was, he was more, he was a kind of a masculine role model who kicked me into shape, so to speak. And I'm very grateful for him because he was a little bit like a surrogate father for me here. Anyway, where am I going with this? My point is that whenever and if ever you are feeling like you need to, because of kind of a general feeling of unease, and uh, you feel that you may want to go to a therapist to help with your anxiety, as long as it's not clinical depression, which in which case, again, I really emphasize, you absolutely should go to see a therapist and get professional help. But I think, and this is also one of the things, the reasons why it went quite, it went quite, uh, I don't want to say viral, it wasn't really viral, but if a lot of discussion generated by it on LinkedIn, I think the reason is because I really dislike this constant yammering about mental health on LinkedIn. There is so much people are outing themselves as struggling with mental health. And you can be sure that if you talk about your story of struggling with mental health, you will get hundreds and hundreds of likes and people will call you brave and pat you on the back and all of that. And I know that this is well meant, 
But don't tell me that this does not also generate its own reward system where people then tend to exaggerate their stuff. I mean, if you really tell me that all these powerful social cues that you get and you see how people get it, you just go through your newsfeed, you see some story of somebody sharing about their mental health struggles and you see that they have 10,000 likes on this, you will get tempted to think, hmm, do I also have a mental health struggle that I could share? You know, and you will start justifying it and you will produce your own mental health challenge. And the last point here is that anxiety is simply part of the human condition. You are meant to be anxious. It's a signal that your body is giving you that something is off. So you should do something about it. And my proposition is that what may be missing from your life is a sense of adventure trying something big, working on something on a big goal, pursuing something awesome, whether that is you want to learn to play the piano at concert pianist level, or you want to make so much money that you can afford to live in a different country, or whatever it may be. It could be starting a family and having 10 children, who knows, you know, it's just whatever this big goal is that you have, pursue that. That is the thing that will let you forget about your anxiety. And I am telling you, and I'm not a doctor, psychologist or anything like that, but I am exhibit one. I was, I, I was on this fork in the road in 2014 where I could have gone down the therapist route and I could have gone from therapist to therapist and trying to figure it out. And I didn't. I chose to walk away from it. And I, I've never been happier than I am now. I have a wonderful wife, I have a beautiful baby boy, I make more money than I ever made in my life and all of that because I simply set it as a goal that I want to be financially free and I want to have a family. And yeah, it's not the biggest goal in the world, I'm not changing the world in a major way, but it makes me very happy and it is difficult. I can never really ever say that I've, I've, I've made it you know, or maybe at some point, once I will have made many millions, maybe then I can, but then even then there will be new challenges. So in this kind of, humans are meant to be in a permanent pursuit of something. And I think it is worth considering that your pursuit of clarity about your anxiety may just be a big waste of time. So that is my message to you today. Yet again, I'm going to repeat, if you feel that you really need professional help, you should get it. But just consider the possibility that the culture around you is making you anxious, that the culture that you're submerged in, all these people who are saying, yeah, it's important to talk about your anxieties. And so on all of these people who are saying these things, they are contributing to the problem. And what you need instead of therapy for your anxiety is an adventure. Okay, I'll talk to you next week. The State of Client Acquisition is a Content360 production. Music by Gavin Knox Grand. To sign up for alerts and to submit written and audio questions, go to stateofclientacquisition.com. I'll talk to you in the next episode. Fire across the country, we slide.